Bakary Sanya is a 30-year-old French international footballer. Originally of Senegalese descent, the French footballer started his senior football career with League One team Auxerre, with whom he made 87 appearances and was a part of the squad that won the French Cup in 2005. Known as Mr Reliable by fans, Sanya has been named in the PFA Team of the Year on two occasions and has played almost 200 games for Arsenal in six seasons. Sanya's career has also been blighted by personal tragedy. However, the France and Arsenal hero has fought through adversity to come back stronger and a jar of heroes we wanted to find out just how he did it. So you're Senegalese, mm -hmm. but you've lived in France your whole life? Yeah, I did. Uh, in Sens, if I'm correct? I was born in Sens, it's approximately one hour south of Paris. I was born there in uh, 1983. So as a child, there's four of you guys, obviously no girls, so this is crazy. <laughs> Your poor mum must have been like, well, what happened to her? She probably wanted some girls in there. Um, did you all play football? We all did. The first one was my dad, and then my oldest brother. And after, I naturally followed because I used to go and, and watch them playing football, and I think I started when I was six years old. At what moment in your life did you think, this is really what I want to do, this is who I want to be, and this is what I want to pursue? When I was about 13 years old, I used to play for um, the regional team. And we had a, like, a small tournament, and um, um, a scout from uh, Oxe, so the team I used to play before, contact my family. He wanted me to join the academy when I was 13, maybe. But my dad refused because he wanted me to, to, to pass my degree. Then when I was maybe 15 years old, I joined uh, the academy, but I used to, to sleep in a, in a college, in a dormitory. I used to go to a normal school. So At this point in your life, did you think, I can make it, I can be a footballer, I can be great? Or was it still, you know... Not even. I remember it was quite difficult the first year because I left my family. I used to travel on Monday morning. I used to take the coach and I didn't know anyone because all of the other students they used to go to a different college. Um, to be honest, my dad always put more pressure on school than he did on football because he knew like over maybe one million football players, maybe ten of them will make it. So I had a smaller chance of uh, to do it or a small amount of chance to, to become a player, but I did it. Do you, are you thankful now? Do you feel like this, because of him pushing you the way he did? Oh, yeah. it's for you. <laughs> I'm very thankful to him, to my parents, because he had to push me. Because he knew I could, I could maybe stop playing football one day. But I nearly did to play chess. So you were a talented chess player? I was okay. I was okay. I just, one more time, wanted to enjoy it. Because uh, first of all, I was with my friends. And it was uh, another way for me to express myself. Do you feel sometimes like you have to pinch yourself to realise, wow, this is my life, this is what's happening, this is what happened? I think I still don't realise. People around me make me realise I'm, I'm famous. But um, I, will, uh, I will think about it when I will retire first. But how does it impact your family, the, the status that you have in society? My parents always say to me, because of you, we we respected. And at the end of the day, it's true because you know how it is. It's even more difficult when you you come from another country. People uh, don't give you like natural respect. But today, because their son is player, they have the open gates. People open everything for them, and I'm glad for it because they deserve it. They work a lot to to raise us as, as, a, as a kid. Mm. So just deserve to have a better life and I think, and I hope they, they have it today because they, they left Senegal without having anything and today they, they have their own house and everyone, I mean, every every single kid like realized and had a good, uh, a good job. So talking about family, you got married very young. Yeah. <laughs> you have two children, which are beautiful, by the way. A beautiful wife. Yeah. Um, I always wanted to get my young to settle quickly because that's what I wanted. I wanted um, to be a young dad. I wanted to have kids quite, quite young. I had the chance to, to meet my wife when I was 18. I'm a dad, a proud dad, and I'm very happy. I'm very pleased to, to have them with me. And uh, one more time, every time I play as well on the pitch, it's for them.
Are you expecting them to become footballers? That's a good question. <laughs> to be honest, they're going to practice the sport they want because I know it's very difficult and even if I can look strong, even if I can look like really proud of what I did, of course I'm very thankful to, to God and to my family and to my to myself because I did I did quite well. Do you feel like having children and being married has changed you or changed your perception of football? Maybe at one point all you thought about was football and maybe, you know, now you see things are different differently. Yeah, your family become your priority. I think for example after after loss Maybe we're gonna lose a game. Things become just easier. You take everything uh, the positive way. You just want to to act a different way on the pitch and off the pitch. On the pitch, you totally focus. Off the pitch, you you become you become a dad again. You become a, a husband again. Do you feel like people around you have changed? since you've become a celebrity? I think it's a did, <laughs> definitely. My phone is ringing every minute. Really? People asking me for for tickets, for always trying to talk to me because, because I play football and some really, really change because they see me as a player, not as a friend anymore. And it's like, a bit sad because they, they treat me different and maybe they respect me one more time because of, of uh, what I do and not who I am. Do you sometimes feel like you are always Sanya, the footballer, and sometimes you would like to be detached and be known as Sanya, the person? Yeah, it's quite difficult because of the people, because of the fans. People always think about football. They always talk about football. I'm pleased to talk about football with them. But sometimes I just want to relax. I just want to to be myself. I don't want to be judged because I play football or because I play well or bad over the weekend. Mm. And it's quite difficult to, to do it in Europe. So if I can do it and, and live somewhere else where I can be myself, I'll do it. Do you ever see any of your teammates, you know, you know, any other team that, you know, that fame has really gotten to their head and they just... Oh, I'm, go, you know. I met many in my life. Some actually were even better than, than me. Some had a natural potential that I didn't have. But because they were too proud or because they were too confident, they didn't make it as a player. You have to stay humble. If you want to make it as a player, you have to stay humble because one day it will track you back. If you bad to people or if you act funny, I believe in destiny and if you're bad to people, you can't be good in your life. You can have a proper life and one day the bad things you did to someone will come back to you. Going back to, um, sorry, your brother's um, death, you know, was it very difficult you know, when someone dies in your family and you, you know, obviously you, you're, you're mourning and that in itself, being anyone, it's very hard. Did you feel like it was really hard to have to keep that image of that image that you have to, you know, still have all that pressure from, from football, having that pressure from, you know, the cameras and the popularity, still smiling when all you wanted to do maybe is, you know, just mourn and, you know, that contrast of having to be that person in public, but feeling the way you felt in private? I think I didn't realize first. I, I spent like one year in my own world. Mm. It happened suddenly, so I didn't expect it at all. And one more time, I didn't think about it. I, uh, I remember my dad calling me and, and saying to me like he passed away. And I was just shocked. I didn't even cry because to me it was just impossible. So I went back to France. I saw my family. Most of people were crying, but I was not. I was just upset inside. And people were looking at me like, what's wrong with him? Like, he has no feeling. Or I felt like a bit different. But one more time, I think because of what I experienced before, when I left home, when I went 
to the academy. I had to to put myself in and protect myself. So and I kept playing. I kept playing, and I think no one here knew about what happened. And uh, even my manager used to talk to me a lot and used to 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 give me support. So I didn't have time to to think. I just start doing stupid things like driving back home without even knowing how I got back home. And now it was hard to focus on the pitch, to, to focus with the ball, and but I had to do it because one more time I had the trust for my from Arsenal, I had the trust for, for everyone. Do you feel uh, pressure from the fans uh, to perform in a certain way? Or does does whatever, you know, one day you'll be, Sanya is amazing, and the next day, oh, Sanya's played really badly. Does that affect the way you play and does that affect your confidence? It does, as a player, it does. That's why you need to be strong game by game. In your mind as well, you need to to be sure of yourself and it can happen to, to be like a bit less confident, but people are going to feel it. And of course, if, when you don't perform, the fans are the first one to to want you to leave the club. You spend so much time with the teammates, especially those who have been there as long as you have. You know, Arsene Wenger, you spend so much time with them as well. Do you see, how do you see them? What is your, do you see them as an adoptive family in a way? Or is it not at all like that? It's completely work and not really. I treat them like my second family because I spend half of my day with them today. We, every two, three days we are at the hotel, we travel. We, we train together, so I need to trust them to feel good in my team and even to perform on the, on the pitch. We have to trust each other and, and that's it. Are you considering switching from right back to centre back? Not, not now. I don't think I'll, I'll be centre back now because first of all we have many players who can play centre back. And I only play centre back because one of, uh, of our players got injured before the game. Now, this is personal to me because, okay, I am half French and half <laughs> Senegalese, but why do you choose France <laughs> instead of Senegal? It's a long story. As a kid, I, I wanted to play for, for Senegal. Mm. But uh, I contacted them. They never replied to me. Uh, really? They never did. I was maybe 16, 17. And I was a bit sad because, you know, I used to see some of my friends going for the national team. I wanted to be, wanted to be part of, of it. Wanted to, to sing the national anthems. They called me it's the same day I had a, a call from the national team, French national team. I had to make the choice. So, mm, so you still went with the uh, with the French team. I went to the, the my French national team. Only had a, until uh, 21 years old to, to make a, my choice. After after it, I couldn't change it, so it was too late. Do you? F- feel a lot of racism in terms of the French team uh, versus, you know, Ar- Arsenal, like the English team. Is that is that all, you know, is that something that doesn't really make a difference? Or? No, I don't think so. Just want to, to pick us towards the way we perform on the pitch. Personally, I'm very proud to play for, for, for the national team today was one of my dreams when I was a kid. I used to watch them on TV and today I'm part of the team, so... What are your greatest moments on the pitch? I won the French Cup in France in 2005. Mm-hmm. It was just uh, my first trophy and the only one until now, so it was just great to see like all the city in, in the stadium because 40,000 people came to the stadium. This is the capacity of Auxerre. And to win last minute was just great. The moment I joined Arsenal as well, because it's like a symbol in France. It's like the French is playing in, in, in England, so I had the opportunity and I have the opportunity to play for this team, so I'm very proud. And I'm looking forward to have great moments as well. And your worst? My worst was probably my last two injuries. Mm. Because when you are out for four, four, four months, suddenly you, you just depend on people. I couldn't drive. I couldn't do anything because I couldn't walk. I was on crutches for six weeks twice. So 
So your life changed. But at the, at the same time, I had the chance to, to spend more time with my family, with my kids. So, so I lost something, but I won in another, another point. So now we've come to the time where it's the cheeky five. The cheeky five are five cheeky questions. Funny, embarrassing, anything that we like to ask our interviewees. So what happened? What's the story behind the hair? To be honest, 10 years later, I don't even know. I used to be, as I say, I used to be a striker. And it was a bait between me and my dad because I need to, to find motivation, extra motivation to, to perform on the pitch. And he, I remember I said to him, you can do it only if you score goals, two goals during the game. And I scored two goals. So I went to, to see him and I started like, laughing at him, like saying, oh, next week you're going to see me differently. I'm going to have blonde hair and I'm going to be great. So I did it. And you've stayed like this ever since? I stayed like this because after, you know, people know it. I, as you, as your person. As me, yeah. They think uh, I'm different. This is the way they recognize me today. And even with my personal sponsor, I have some agreements, so everything is totally different now. Okay. Second question is that we know that all you guys have nicknames when it's in the changing rooms. What is your nickname? <laughs> I'm very slow. When I got ready, they always say to me, oh, you're not happy to go back to your wife, or you act like if you didn't have kids, but I just like to take my time to, to care about myself, to, to have some massage, or even to get dressed or to dance. I like dancing and put the music and I like, and I enjoy my time at the dressing room. And yeah, if I had to, to pick up a word, a slow man, maybe. Um, the third one brings me to what you were saying earlier on. I saw an interview where uh, your teammate was saying that you like to dance naked in front of the mirror. Ah, no, Is no, no, no. That <laughs> that's true? wrong, that's wrong. <laughs> not <laughs> naked, I was not, <laughs> not naked. Um, no, I just like to, to correct myself. The best way to learn how to dance is to to look at yourself in the mirror. So I try to, to change my moves and to... Do you want to show us a little moves? Nah, I can't dance. <laughs> when your kids were born, you, they were a lot lighter than you. So do you want to say the story? <laughs> <laughs> they were very light and uh, I was just shocked. I was very happy. But I was expecting... A, Black baby, <laughs> because I'm really dark. So when I saw them a bit lighter, well, very light compared to me, or compared to a mixed race kid, I was a bit shocked, and I start thinking, oh, maybe I should ask for a DNA, or even if I trust my wife, it's like funny stories in my mind. But the way it is, it's very shocking because you expect like the baby to be like already dark. Of course, it, it won't happen because like, this is wait the way... Wait a minute, this isn't normal. <laughs> <laughs> because this is uh, the way life is. But uh, no, I'm very pleased. And, uh, uh, what is your most embarrassing moment? I must say my first interview. Because as I said, I used to be really shy. I only went to this interview because my friend asked me. It was about him. It's Samir Nasri. And I didn't get used to, <laughs> I didn't get used to to, 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 in front of the camera and to the press, to journalists and, and the light suddenly went to me. She started asking me questions, I started replying to her, but she cut my, my answer, starting by another question. So I tried to answer again, she cut my, my, my answer again, asking another question, so I got lost and I felt stupid. The next day, the players, they kill me as well. Oh, really? I go, but you should go back to school. You don't know how to speak. And, um, and I really want to say thank you very much. This pleasure. was great for me. And, um, and it's an honour to have you and to interview you. Thank you.